Okay, so now I am going to present to you a more complex example. We are going to define it in the ANSYS Maxwell software. Then we use the finite element code and compare. So suppose let's copy this design and paste it here. Instead of this problem, suppose we are going to calculate a multi-domain problem. What is multi-domain problem? The electric permittivity is constant for this region, is air. But I am going to draw another rectangle here. This is in the middle. So these regions are the same, but here I am going to change the material of this object. For example, we should select a material that its permittivity is different. So assign material. Relative permittivity. Let's select a material with high permittivity. Sort. Let's select this one. Right. Relative permittivity is equal to 12, right? So select and change the color. So you can see materials, right? Relative permittivity is 12, but relative permittivity of the vacuum is equal to 1. So what if we solve this problem? Analyze. The solution is in progress. And you can see the value of electric field, electric potential, and the EX is almost zero here, right? And this is the value of voltage. We don't have negative values, right? The, the epsilon is higher so the solution is totally different from what we uh, had right so if i select all objects and plot mesh you can see the solution mesh and now let's check if we can generate this solution using our code so first i use the first order elements and let me write n e here this is n e plus one let's use 10 elements so this time we have to specify the epsilon e also here I write epsilon e is equal to what? I write if if the center point the center point of the mesh element this is center point I write xc center point divided by 2 this is the value of two boundary points divided by 2 if the center point is lower than d divided by 2 epsilon i is equal to 1 otherwise epsilon i 
is equal to 12. And, right? This time we don't have a constant value for D. Also, let me check another thing here. The excitation, right. So, and here in the code, instead of E, I have a variable E. I don't have a constant E here. Finally, I can calculate the value of V. So, let's save finite element analysis, try 3 and run so in this case let me delete these solutions we, we cannot define error because we don't have analytic solution right bfe x and vf so I don't need this analytic answer anymore. You can see the solution here, right? And you can see the solution in the ANSYS Maxwell software. Right? For electric potential. The solution for electric potential. If I consider 20 elements, excuse me, here VFE is the solution of XN, connectivity list, and this one. So this is the epsilon E and LE. So this is the value of epsilon that is equal to 1 for this element, equal to 12 for this element. Number of elements is divisible by 2. So uh, we have a number of elements here and a number of elements here. But why we have this value for V? So let's check what is the reason. Let me apply a charge density here. Uh, the same as this one. And try. Maybe we don't have the same charge distribution for all regions. Okay, you can see variation in the value of V and E. So, what do you think? Why we don't have a curve chair here in our solution? Because we used the same procedure and here we used LE and epsilon E corresponding to each mesh element. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. This is uh, in analytic solution. This is E. E is epsilon zero times epsilon relative. So this is times this one, right? That uh, that was relative. So if I consider this equal to 12, right? This is the answer, right? This is the answer. If, uh, if I consider, for example, 20 elements. 
and this is the answer calculated by the ANSYS Maxwell software, right? So we are able to capture the same solution. Also, you can try this for quadratic element and check the result with the ANSYS Maxwell software. This is the value of E electric field. We have a jump here because of discontinuity in the value of permittivity, electric permittivity. So, as you can see here, we can change the code like this to be able to solve multi domain problems, right? And the procedure is pretty the same. We don't have a big difference. Just I modified the value of electric permittivity for two regions to be able to regenerate this result. You can check what is the minimum value of voltage 0 0.06 and also I can plot the minimum value of V here 0 0.06 the same as this one to check the answer right so is this example clear yeah, it's good. So the procedure is the same for cubic elements. For cubic element, we have four mesh nodes per element. And these are shape functions. The N1 to N4, node voltages, shape functions, node voltages, and the stiffness matrix elements force vector elements right so you can see that the procedure is totally the same so you can try cubic elements and let me know if you have any questions